Hello dancers and welcome to day 20 of our Corona Quarantine Daily Vlog. Teacher Joel here today with you with a brand new white t-shirt. Well, it's not that new. But anyways, because we're starting different type of videos starting with this 20th video vlog, we're going to go into a little bit more in depth into technique and theories about um, different aspects of ballroom dancing. Now, one of the big ballroom dancing um, aspects is alignment, direction, all of this sort of stuff. And as a beginner, intermediate, or advanced level dancer, we want to be super duper clear about these different concepts. Let's get ourselves started. Beginners, my expectation is for you to pause this video. Let's see if we can get that perfectly into view. Pause the video right now and copy what you see on the screen. It should look like a compass and we're gonna call this the dancer's compass. There it is again. We have line of dance, diagonal wall, diagonal center, center, wall, diagonal center against the line of dance, against the line of dance and diagonal wall against the line of dance. As you can see, hello, as you can see, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight different basic alignments, eight different basic alignments. Now, as you are looking at these basic alignments, we should understand that because there are eight of them, if you put them all together, this is one full rotation, but when you then put just one segment, it should be one eight. Hence, we use the fraction one eight of a turn. This is one eight, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seventh eighths, eight eighths. Eight eighths would be one full turn. So at a beginner level, whether you are now a lead or a follow, I'm expecting you to understand now what an eighth of a turn, what at two eighths or a quarter of a turn, what three eighths, three eighths, three eighths, three eighths, three eighths all mean. We have to know this. Generally, we do not have to understand um, five eighths. There's a few figures like a double reverse spin. There's almost five eighths of a turn when we're doing um, the full turn. Um, but most of the time it's either an eighth a quarter, three eighths, or a half a turn. So please copy this and use this as your dancer's compass. It does not matter if you are a lead or a follow. All right, now that we have that written out on a piece of paper and you've copied this down, when we now go into our dancing practice here in my little rec room here at home, we are going to use this compass by placing the compass underneath us. So how do we use this compass? We place it underneath us, and I'm going to do it in this direction for now. Hello, Red Sox. So I'm standing right above this compass, and when I look down, this compass is telling me where is the line of dance, where is my diagonal wall, where is my diagonal center, and all of the other alignments there are. So if I now take this and I go, hmm, I want to start my natural turn in the waltz as a follow, for instance. What I do is I do not turn the paper. I do not turn the paper. I turn myself in relation to the paper. Do, 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 do. And I know that I should be now backing diagonal wall. I am backing, my back is towards the diagonal wall. I look down and go, yep, there's a diagonal wall. If I was there, that would be wall. Here, now I'm diagonal wall. And I know that from my technique book, the technique book, here's my old battered technique book. Yeah, you can buy these online. I think I'll try to find a, um, a link in, and put it in the description below where you can click and hopefully um, they'll be able to send the, these out to you by mail. Um, so anyways, I'll, I'll hopefully be able to uh, find that and put it in, in the link, okay? So if you open up the technique book to say, for instance, where's our Waltz natural turn. Boy, boy, it's all coffee stains and everything. You can see how there is a alignment, alignment column. 
and they would be either facing or backing diagonal wall, pointing line of dance, facing line of dance. So whenever we're now learning new figures, especially at the syllabus level, but also at the open level, we do need to be very clear what is our alignment. Now, to be really specific, the alignment has to do with our feet. I'm gonna say that again. Our alignment has to do with our feet. So at the beginner and at the intermediate level, I'm thinking, okay, well, there's my feet, where my feet di backing diagonal wall, and now I finish my natural turn, and I should be now facing the line of dance. Now, the trick to this, and I don't have a perfect way of doing this, but this dancer's compass needs to follow you anywhere that you're going, even if you're taking small steps. This compass needs to be right underneath you, and as you're going, it follows you around so that the next figure, for instance, I finished the natural turn and I'm over here, I need to bring that compass with me. There we go, now I know where my line of dance, I still know where my diagonal center, and I still know where my diagonal wall is. Why? Because I can cheat and look down at the piece of paper. This piece of paper never turns while we're dancing along a wall. I'll say that again, it does not turn. We turn along this compass. We could be going line of dance. We could be going diagonal center. We could be going diagonal center against the line of dance, whatever the figure mandates. But what we're trying to do now is understand that regardless of where I am, am I closer to the camera? Am I farther from the camera? Am I closer to the wall? Am I closer to the center? This compass does not change. My line of dance maintains its direction, it, whether it's here, whether it's there, whether it's here. We really wanna be super clear at the beginner level and even when we get into the intermediate level that this does not change. The only time this changes now is when we turn a corner and our new wall is being danced along and therefore the line of dance, boom, will turn, yes? And because we always dance counterclockwise around the dance floor, this compass will turn 90 degrees to the left and the new line of dance will be established. Again, we will use the same dancer's compass in the same way we did on the original wall. Now, as we start to go from our intermediate to our advanced level, we start to differentiate between our body alignment and our foot alignment. Again, I'm going to I'm going to repeat that. There's a difference at the higher levels between our foot alignment and our body alignment. At the beginner levels, we still do when we talk about CBMP, contra body movement, where we have our body and a side lead. If you, have, if you don't remember, I'm going to try to put a little link somewhere, I don't know where these cards go, um, about CBMP in, in a previous video. But these actions now, I want you to see, and I'm going to get a little closer, I'm going to give you a general guideline that there will be up to, up to, doesn't have to be always to this amount, but up to, an eighth of a turn difference between your body alignment and your foot alignment. At the higher level, at the advanced level, I want you to now contemplate the concept of body alignment can be up to an eighth of a turn. An eighth of a turn, it could be this way. My feet could be now diagonal wall and my body could be line of dance, yes? So if I demonstrate that for you right now, I'm gonna place my compass here. I'm going to say, as a lead, I'm going to start my natural turn. So my feet are diagonal to the wall, but, and I'm gonna use my blue water bottle to help show, my body could be up to an eighth of a turn or 45 degrees in a different direction. Now, we're not going to go through all the specifics of which direction we should be in, and that's a whole other set of videos um, within the vlog, which we might be able to get into, hopefully not too long with this whole quarantine. But anyways, we want to make sure that we could, at an advanced level, understand that we are up to now an eighth of a turn in a different direction. My feet have not changed. I'm still diagonal wall, but now my body, if you notice, is now facing, my body is now facing line of dance. My feet, in a way, we can now say are pointing 
diagonal wall. We don't want to get into too many details about the semantics as teachers use between facing and backing and pointing, all this sort of stuff. But understand that now at an advanced level, when you're going through your natural terms, when you're going through your feather steps, when you're going through any figure, especially our syllabus basic figures, but even at a super high international open amateur professional level, um, we were always dancing with different diagonals of, with our bodies in relation to our feet. And it all comes down to, again, understanding you our dancer's compass. Yeah, I want you guys to be really clear about this. I'm gonna bring this up one more time. If you haven't done so already, please pause the video, copy what you see on the screen. Doesn't take too long, I just grabbed a piece of paper, grabbed a marker, you could grab a pencil, whatever, and then write those out. Contemplate what this means to you as a dancer. Go through your routines that you know, whether it's your competitive routines, whether it's routines that you, you learned from Teacher Joel in the intermediate group classes, and we talked about all these different figures. In those review videos that you should have in your inbox, for those of you who are in, in the intermediate group class, we have the review videos on YouTube links, yes? And I talk specifically about the starting and ending alignments of each figure. Make this a cheat sheet for you to be able to do it in your living room, in your bedroom, in your office, wherever, and you can practice this over and over and really understand what's going on. Just keep in mind when we are now dancing, I'm gonna put this on an angle so you can see, there's my line of dance, there's my diagonal wall, diagonal center, and as we turn a corner, bloop, we have to change that to now the new line of dance, diagonal center, and diagonal wall, all right? So please use this as a little cheat sheet. You're going to scratch your head for a bit, three-eighths of a turn, a quarter of a turn, oh, what's happening? But I guarantee, if you understand this and you're able to put this into practice in a small space, once you get into our big ballroom, everything's gonna feel so much easier, so much more comfortable, so much more confident. That's it, all I have for you today. We're gonna go into more technique um, and go away from figures and more into theory and principles. If you have any specific questions, or if there's any principles or any kind of questions as a general idea that you really want Teacher Joel to cover, you know what to do. Comments or email. You know how to get a hold of me. Thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow.